guys so I'm here at a local park it's pretty windy but I'm gonna use the microphones on the built-in devices instead of a you know a professional microphone with a wind muff but I got a Frankenstein contraption here with the uh, go 2 on the right the pocket 2 from DJI on the left I got a GoPro 8 in the middle and the boy fun very cheap action camera we're gonna give these a go I'll keep it labeled on the video screen which is which test to see how these shake when you walk. Now, all the other cameras are just recording in normal mode. The Go 2 is recording in standard video right now. Park's in pretty poor shape right now. It's not quite ready for spring. Everything is dead. At this next pole, I'm going to jog to the next pole. Okay? Here we go. So that was a short jogging test because I'm out of shape. That's as far as my jogging test go. So you can see on the DJI Pocket 2, it's not a very wide picture, but there is a lens attachment to get the picture a little wider, like a standard action camera. This is our bomber here in town, located smack in the middle of a park. It was donated to the city of Altus by the Air Force, obviously. I have no idea how it got here. <laughs> it's been here since I've been here. Very nice static display for the city to have. Oh, that sounds good. Quite, my Tesla doesn't quite sound like that. But I, I could probably take him up to 60 though. Maybe I'll try to race him someday. So now I'm doing the same test again, and this time the Go 2 is in pro video. So we'll see if there's a, a difference between video and pro video. We'll go ahead and do a short jog with pro video enabled. We'll go from this orange cone to the next one. Okay, that was with pro video enabled. Now I'll do a short jog with pro video enabled looking at myself. Here we go. The cameras are definitely bouncing around and I can tell the 
the gimbaled one over here gets a little off off center after I've been bouncing around because you know they're made to kind of control they're not really self riding if you know what I mean this is just a POV test we're gonna go drive around so I realized I didn't uh, show you this other POV camera that I use this is the one I call the EP7 because that's its model number so you can check that out that's how you wear it on your head it just hangs off to the side this is a POV test between the EP7 and the Insta360 Go 2 I'm just going to oh the Sun is bright but I can't put that down I'm just going to drive around until the battery dies the EP7 is recording in 4k 30 the insta360 go 2 is recording in 1440 man i'll be glad when we can drive the other direction I'm just gonna have the car drive for me man that sun is in my face but we will be turning to the right here pretty soon okay I'm gonna take over here I don't have the full self-driving package so I have to make all the turns So the reason why I say this <laughs> with certainty that this test is only going to be about 20 minutes is because that's all this camera can record for, the Go 2. It, in the Pro mode, it seems to run out of juice at about 20 minutes. So we're at the 4 minute mark and it's down to 85%. Now I, I don't have any concerns with the uh, EP7 over here running at 4K. Uh, I've gotten an hour I've gotten over an hour of record time on the EP7 so I'll just keep looking at this occasionally and see how many percent remains I'm using a hat to hold the go to because if I was using the pendant attachment it would be too low on my chest you wouldn't really see over the steering wheel so it needs to be on my head uh, why are you stopping at a yellow light dude I could have made it through that four times that person really did stop at a green light they were stopping before it even turned if they turn right, I'm going to be pissed. Okay. They didn't. Uh-oh. Something happened. My head just vibrated. Did we just lose the, uh, the go-to? Let me uh, pull in here and stop. Did its battery already go down? Okay, we have that flashing yellow light again, which what I'm assuming means um, overheated. I know the instruction manual says overheated is flashing red light, but there is nothing that should be flashing yellow per the instructions. and. It is really hot and it stopped recording so I'm going to assume that we are in an overheat situation here okay so now I'm at another park and I'm recording in flow state hope these big geese don't come after me that might make for an interesting video but 
I'm going to go down here and we're going to check out. I've never seen this, this low. Oh, they got ducks too. There's white geese and then there's ducks down there. And these guys are watching out for their friends over there. I may be running back to my car like a little chicken. We'll see. We call this the small reservoir. Come over here and I'll show you the big reservoir. <laughs> and the fishing uh, platform is about 25 feet off the water. <laughs> Only been this low a few times since I've lived here the last 15 years. I just wanted to give everybody a low light comparison. It's pretty much completely dark. It's just city lights that's keeping the area lit. Forgot about my porch lights out here. One thing you got to remember is you have a really bright flashing light on your forehead. Let me show you. So here's what I look like right now. <laughs> let me let me turn that around. There you go. Now I got some light. But <laughs> that flashing light is really bright. So that's what it looks like at night. Look up at the skies. Oh. One of my motion activated lights just come on. Let me go over here where it's darker. We got this thing cranked up to 11 now. Let's see if you can see any stars up there. Any stars? There's one. Oh, that's the moon. Yeah, that's the moon, guys. <laughs> you can see my phone. Hey guys, Crazy Postman here, coming to you from the editing bay. So I was trying to get all these video clips put together, and I found that if you use the Pro Video feature, and you export the video straight from the camera by plugging in a USB, you don't get a normal video. You get a circular video. And I, I assume that the processing must be done in the app. So there's going to be an extra step involved if you want a normal 16x9 video. You're going to have to go through the app and export that video and then upload that save file to get the normal looking video. If you just upload the video straight off the camera, let me show you what you get. So this is what you'll be working with, with a pro video just uploaded straight from the camera. You just get this circular, and obviously in the software, they zoom into it and make it a 16 by 9. But if you don't go through the software, you're going to be dealing with this... Uh, Circular picture. So in conclusion, would I recommend this camera? And the answer is complicated because it is not a GoPro replacement. It has a kind of a, a niche. You have to use it for what it's made to do. It is a great 
POV camera for short clips. You know, it's a good action camera for short clips. But that's the thing you got to remember. It does not record long length videos. It will overheat. I overheated it uh, one time in 8 minutes, one time in 12 minutes, one time in 20 minutes. So it can only record for a certain length of time and you got to stop and let it cool down. Plus the battery, if you're recording in flow state, it will only go 12 to 15 minutes anyway and it'll be dead. If you use this camera within its capabilities, it's a great little camera because it can get into places and do things that a full-size action camera can't do. It's just, you gotta remember its weaknesses. It's not very good in low light and the battery does not last long. Plus, another weakness would be the internal storage is quite small. And speaking on that, it's actually kind of quite difficult to get the video out of it. So if you're recording in standard video mode, you can plug a USB cable right up to it and take that video off and it'll be fine. But if you're recording in the pro video mode, the video file is going to be the whole circular wide angle view. And you're going to have to manually edit that to be able to use that file. Now to get around that, what you have to do is upload that file to your phone in the app and then export that file from the app to a saved file in the phone and then upload that file from the phone to the computer and then it's in the proper format. Whew! That's kind of a headache when you have 47 different files but in my testing you know it can transfer the file from the camera to the phone and probably 20 30 seconds to a minute or two depending on how big the the file is but then what you got to do is export the video file from the software and that can take two three four eight ten minutes depending on how slow your phone is that that process takes quite a while and then from there you can just plug your phone into your computer on USB and it just pulls that file off pretty quickly. But you just got to remember all those steps and be prepared for this. You know, this camera is a pretty good camera, but it's got some asterisks. It's got quite a few asterisks. So will I recommend the Insta Go 2? That just depends on the use case. You know, is it a GoPro replacement? No, it is not. You still need a GoPro type action camera for your standard long length action camera type situations. Where this uh, Insta360 Go 2 is going to come in handy is certain POV situations and you know when you need to get a camera in a tight spot or if you just need to grab something and go uh, but it's not going to be a very long video. That's where the Insta360 excels. Just keep that in mind when you're looking for your next camera. This is a great camera for very specific things. It's not a good overall do everything camera. But thanks for watching this video comparison of the Insta360 Go 2, and I will see you in the next one.